Welcome to another add-on showcase for Good of 4. I'm going to showcase 10 super cool add-ons that will definitely help you create games, so let's start. This video was made possible by supporters on Patreon. If you want to help me make more videos like these, you can support me on Patreon and get access to them ad-free and early. Thanks. Debugging is not fun, and while Godot gives you the ability to monitor and modify the game on the fly, it's still tedious sometimes. Runtime Debug Tools by BBB Scarter gives you different tools to make that easier. A debug camera overriding the in-game camera to navigate in your scene freely. Couple that with the in-game object picker, it allows you to select the object you see, which shows you the object in the remote tree. This is incredibly useful, you don't have to go in the remote tree, dig for your object anymore. This also works in reverse, meaning you can select an object in the remote tree, and you'll see the selection on the screen in your game. While doing this, you can also toggle the debug visualization, meaning you can turn on or off the collision shapes and switch to wireframe mode incredibly useful. I showed you these tools for 3D, but they are also available for 2D games, so everything you've seen works for 2D and 3D games. This is a must-have. Continuing with in-editor tools, Little Camera Preview by Anthony EC brings a picture-in-picture -picture preview of 2D and 3D camera. This means you'll see what the camera sees when you click on it. No need to toggle the camera preview button, and of course, the preview is much nicer as it stays in a small, draggable, and resizable window. Straight to the point and super useful. I love it. You know what is difficult in Godot 3D? Drawing lines. Yes, I'm not joking. There is still no built-in tools contrary to the Line 2D. But don't worry, Line Renderers by Betelars will save you the headache. To use it, you simply add a Line Renderer 3D node to your scene and update it with the points you want. You can change a bunch of parameters, such as the start and end thickness, corner and smooth cap, and if you want to draw caps and corners separately. You can also choose to use global coordinates or not, and finally how to scale the texture. Because yes, of course, you can and use textures on it. This is incredibly useful and I'm glad we finally have a simple way to draw lines in 3D. To be fair, the add-on was made by Betelars, but it's based on work by DBP8890, but also the C-Sharp implementation of Polo High, and finally the Godot 4 port by Lemmy ST24. Enough debugging and visual stuff, let's code. What now? You're afraid of coding? No problem, Block Coding by EndlessM will make it easy for you. This plugin brings a scratch-like coding experience to Godot, perfect for children and beginners. This add-on is super easy to use, and once installed, you can simply add a block code node as a children of your node. You'll have access to a new tab where you can drag and drop blocks to make your game. The blocks that you'll see available will depend on what object you attach your code to. This makes it easier to use and you'll not get overwhelmed by by millions of blocks. They also provide high-level blocks to simplify the use of common games elements, such as simple scoring to display an on-screen score, or simple character to have a keyboard-controlled character. Distance Join 2D by Dastmo is a simple add-on adding a distance join for your 2D games. This acts like a spring joint but without the springiness. Useful when you want to attach two bodies together by a rigid link. You simply set it up by adding it to the scene and assign the node you want to attach. The distance can be set manually or computed from the original positions of the bodies. This is another simple add-on but very useful when you want to work with physics bodies in Godot. Having another joint like that gives you more possibilities, which I really really like. You know what's fun? Destroying stuff. And Smash the Mesh by Clodophos will let you do exactly that with your 3D meshes. This add-on lets you destroy your geometry in chunks on which physics can be applied. It comes with two modes, STM Instance 3D when you want to destroy lightweight geometry, they're useful to destroy things on the fly. But if you want more complex geometry or you want to create lots of chunks, the result can be pre-computed and cached. For that, you use STM Cached Instance 3D, which caches the computation in a compressed scene on disk. 
You can reuse this scene whenever you want and of course use the same geometry instance in many different places. This add-on is incredibly easy to use and super powerful. It's just a ton of fun to play around with it and I can't wait to see how you're adding destructible meshes to your game. You know what's not fun though? Typing the same thing over and over again. If twin and twin is running, twin kill, twin is equal to create twin, blah blah blah. But this is over, thanks to Magic Macros by the Duriel. This add-on brings enhanced autocomplete and code snippets to your Godot project. When you're typing, the add-on looks for the predefined pattern and if found, allows you to replace it with your snippets by pressing tab. Because the add-on is installed in your project, it allows you to share the snippets with your team, making it super useful in team projects where you want everyone to control contribute and benefit from snippets. The snippets also support parameters, meaning you can do set get new variable float1 to create a float variable with a value of 1 and its set get functionalities. This is very powerful as sometimes snippets only come with default values and you still have to modify them manually. The add-on comes with a predefined macro for set get, init, ready, func, and node to get you started. The add-on was developed to be used as a git submodule so you can easily add it to your game's git and keep it up to date that way. This also shows the need for global add-ons as it would make total total sense to have the ability to share snippets between all of your projects. In the meantime, you can check my previous add-on showcase where I talked about the globalized add-on which can help with that. Have you heard about Tracy, the real-time nanosecond resolution remote telemetry hybrid frame and sampling profiler for games and other applications? No? Well, you should. It's a very powerful tool to help you profile your game and understand what's taking half of your frame time, which makes your game run at 15 FPS on the Switch. <sighs> Godot Tracy by Pineapple brings this powerful tool to Godot as a module. It's slightly more complicated than using an add-on because you need to build Godot with the module enabled, but it can be incredibly useful to profile precisely your game. Once installed, you can add a frame mark in the platform-specific loop to mark the boundaries of the frame. From there, you'll have very detailed results on what is taking time in your frame. Incredibly useful if you want to profile complex games or if you want to port to lower spec consoles such as I don't know, the Switch maybe? If you don't like the way Godot displays the scripts in the editor, don't worry, because Scripts IDE by Maran23 will add tabs at the top of the script editor to display your scripts. Thanks to the horizontal space gained, it also shows a panel on the side to see all the methods in your scripts, and of course, they're color-coded. Red square for classes, yellow for signals, etc. You can of course toggle this panel on and off and make it pop using a shortcut to quickly navigate through your methods with arrow keys and with search. I've been using it in some Godot 4 projects and I really enjoy it. I think having the scripts as tabs just beneath the scenes makes total sense and it's probably going to become my new default for future Godot 4 projects. There's a lot of customization possible so I'll let you install it and discover it further. What are in games is always super cool, and this experiment brings a very convincing ocean generation to Godot. Ocean Waves by 2Retro is an ocean made with the inverse Fourier transform, with a bunch of parameters you can tweak to change the behavior and look of the ocean and waves. If you're not familiar with this technique, I invite you to check Acerola's video on the subject. The FFT-based technique allows for a very convincing result, especially in the high frequencies, which creates details in the waves, and can easily be tweaked for the desired result. Another important aspect is performance. The FFT is a well-known and very scalable algorithm, which means it should be quite efficient, especially on the GPU with massive parallelization. So go ahead, use this add-on and make your own indie Sea of Thieves with Godot. Speaking of FFT, if you want to get better at math, today's sponsor Brilliant can really help you out. In game development, math fundamentals are important, especially when dealing with shaders, algorithms, and graphics computing. And Brilliant is here to help, with a range of fascinating courses, from math to computer science, with a hands-on problem-solving approach that let you play with interesting concepts. With thousands of lessons and new ones added every month, you'll have access to all the resources you need. You can learn anywhere, right on your phone, with fun and bite-sized lessons. 
Whether you want a quick practice or a deep dive in vectors, for example, this fundamental concept for game dev can be easily approached with engaging and hands-on lessons to bring you from curiosity to mastery with interactive challenges and problems for you to solve. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash mrlipteach, scan the QR code on screen or use the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks Brilliant for sponsoring the video. Let's finish this showcase with something you've been dreaming of for a while now. Embed Game by Fabimax Games lets you run your game as if it was embedded in the Godot editor, Unity style. I know it's a highly requested feature, which can be especially interesting for those of you working on small monitors and laptops, or just because you prefer it. Once installed, you have a simple toggle at the top of Godot next to the 2D and 3D buttons, which allows you to switch between normal and embedded mode. The embedding works really well and is fully resizable if you need to make the node tree or the inspector bigger, for example. You can switch the embedding at any time and of course, you can still navigate to the 2D, 3D and scripts tabs while the game is running. I'm sure lots of you will find this add-on incredibly useful, so don't hesitate to give it a go. And check out Spirebound, the game they're working on for which they developed this add-on. These were my add-ons recommendations and I hope you enjoy them. As always, you can tell me in the comments below what is your favorite add-on and if you have more to share, don't hesitate. I'm always looking for new add-ons. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!